This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. And welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Worldwide toll-free, 1-800-610-7035. Email exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger. Exxon Radio TV at hotmail.com and our website www.exxonradiotv.com. My guest this hour is Dr. Patrick Heron. He joins us from the Emerald Isle of Ireland uh, this evening. We're going to be talking about the Nephilim and the pyramids. Now, Dr. Patrick Heron was born in Dublin in 1952. He was 24 years old when he had a Saul on the road to Damascus type of epiphany while reading the Bible. Thus began his Christian walk. He became interested in the Bible prophecy concerning the end times. About 1996, that was. In 1997, his first book, Apocalypse Soon, was published and became a bestseller in Ireland. Now, uh, it entered the Irish bestseller list after an interview with Gareth O'Callaghan, an RTE radio who said, this is a quote, read it in one sitting, read it in one sitting, and was gripped. Joining me now from Ireland is the one and only Dr. Patrick Heron. And uh, Pat, welcome back to the X-Zone. Rob, it's lovely to speak to you again. Uh, Pat, you are one of the busiest people that I know these days. Um, tell, Tell me, what have you been up to? Well, uh, I wasn't too busy for seven weeks after Christmas because I went over to New Zealand and spent seven weeks over there. Uh, I've got three daughters and two of them are now living and mm-hmm. working in Christchurch, New Zealand. They right. were in, middle, in the middle of the big earthquake that happened last year. So uh, we went and spent seven weeks over there with them because it's an absolutely stunning country. Uh the best run country I've been ever been in in my whole life and everything that we do wrong here in Ireland politically and financially and every other way they seem to do properly over there it's absolutely very prosperous place it's full of mountains and rivers if you like fly fishing yeah and hunting it, it's just a stunning stunning country and driving around Rob in the any of the, the North Island or the South Island, uh, when you come into a town, any town, say 4,000 people, it looks like it's just been done up and painted because the President of the United States is coming tomorrow. But that's just the way they are. It's a fabulous place. It has one slight drawback, though, and that is is that there's a fault line running right down through the whole two islands. Wow. So even when we were in Christchurch with our girls, we were getting shakes almost on a daily basis. But it's an absolutely beautiful place. And if I was in my 20, 20s or 30s again, I'd be gone. Well, Pat, we're glad you got home safe and sound, uh, because tonight I'd like to talk to you about a couple of things. I'd like to talk to you about the Nephilim, as well as the pyramids of the apocalypse. And um, tell me, Pat, we've got about a minute before I have to take my break. What is your impression of what's going to happen on December the 21st, 2012? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if absolutely nothing happens on 21st of December, 2012, because the Mayan calendar 
and many of the other ancient monuments in mm -hmm. Guatemala, Peru, the Nazca Lions down there in Peru, the giant pyramids in Mexico, uh, as, as well as many other monuments in the world like Angkor Wat in Cambodia, the giant heads of Easter Island, Newgrange in Ireland, uh, Stonehenge in England, and the Great Pyramids were all built, I believe, by the people that we're going to talk about um, tonight, Rob, the Nephilim. There is one connection between a Neolithic tomb here in Ireland and the Mayan calendar, and I can get that back to that after the break. All right, why don't we do that? Pat, thanks very much for joining us tonight. Always a great pleasure having you on the show. Exonation. Nation, Dr. Patrick Heron is my special guest. His website, neph.ie. That's neph.ie. And uh, the good doctor and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break. As the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't forget, you can listen to the Exxon seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days of the year at www.xzbn.net forward slash live dot htm. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere. Or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. Are you interested in the paranormal, ghosts, UFOs, or psychic phenomenon? Join me, Tim Bartley, co-host of Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, coming mid-January 2017 to the XZBN. We will channel spirits live and talk to them, revealing all kinds of amazing information. Spiritual attachments will be found and removed on the show, and so much more. To find out when you can listen to Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, visit www.xzbn.net for listeners on both sides of the veil. And welcome back. Every time I hear that song, it reminds me of the Irish joke. What's the difference between an Irish wedding and an Irish wake? One less drunk. 1-800-610-7035, worldwide toll-free. Dr. Patrick Heron is my special guest this hour. His website, N-E-P-H dot I-E. That's Neff dot I-E. Pat, before we went to the break, uh, you kind of uh, gave me a bit of a, a teaser by saying that there's a connection with the Mayan calendar and something else. What was that? It's a place called Newgrange in Ireland. It's a Neolithic tomb. Mm -hmm. It's about exactly 30 minutes from where I'm sitting right now, which is north of Dublin. Um, it covers about three acres. It's all made up of stones, mm -hmm. and then it's got grass on top of it. But there's one uh, opening to it. And this, and when you go into this opening, Rob, you've got to bend down and you you, go, you walk in and in the middle of this Neolithic tomb, there's an inner sanctum. And on one day of the year, when the sun rises, mm -hmm. because of the angle of the sun, it illuminates that inner circle just on one day of the year. And that one day happens to be the 21st of December, which is the winter solstice. And, and so isn't, isn't that strange? Because when we were in Mexico uh, visiting the Mayan ruins in Tulum, there is one chamber there that the exact same thing happens, except it's June 21st, the summer solstice. Yes. Well, the, the thing is, is that it's the same with the Great Pyramids of Giza in Egypt, which mm -hmm. we are going to discuss. There are four what they call star shafts uh, in the Great Pyramid of Giza, two on the north face and two on the south face. And these four point 
at four distinct stars, Draco, Sirius, Orion and Beta Ursa Minor. So many, many of these monuments around the world that there's no accounting for, like the, the pyramids in mm -hmm. Mexico, the pyramids in Guatemala, where you were in Mexico, there's a, a lot of stuff in Nazca, Angkor Wat in Cambodia, as I say, the, the joint heads in Easter Island, Newgrange in Ireland, Stone Edge, all of them have astronomical associations because the people that built these, the, the cabal mm -hmm. of people, which I believe are the Nephilim, which means the fallen ones, that built these, all have starry names. They are all named after stars. For instance, uh, Mars, Saturn, Pluto, Mercury, Jupiter, uh, Sirius, Venus, Athena, Orion. These are some of the gods of Greek and Roman mythology. That's right. And some of these are mentioned in uh, biblical prophecy as well. Uh, the Antichrist, for, for instance, whom my, new, my latest book is called Return of the Antichrist and the New World Order. And his name is given in Revelation chapter 9, verse 11. And his name is Abaddon in Hebrew and in, and in Greek, Apollyon. And Apollyon is nothing more than how the, the Greeks spell Apollo. And Apollo was one of the original pantheon of gods, along with Mars, Saturn, Jupiter, mm -hmm. etc. And Apollo was the god of music, of prophecy, of medicine. He had his oracle at Delphi in Greece. And he is one of the, the pre-flood Nephilim, the fallen angels of Genesis 6. And he is the guy who goes on to become what we call the Antichrist. But in the book of Revelation, he's referred to 33 times as the beast from the abyss, or he who ascends out of the abyss and goes to his destruction. So these guys are supernatural beings, fallen angels, if you were. And, and we're told back in Job that God named and numbered the stars. And these stars, again, is another metaphor for both the stars, those little lights that we see twinkling in the night sky, mm -hmm. but also stars are a metaphor for angels, both good angels and bad angels. For instance, it talks in Revelation 9, it talks about a star fell from heaven to earth yeah. with the key to the bottomless pit. So this is why these guys and a lot of the buildings they left behind have astronomical associations because they know that the whole prophecy from Genesis to Revelation is written in the stars. Uh, that's how the Magi knew that the Messiah was going to be born because they knew this knowledge was written in the 12 constellations of the of the the books of the Zodiac, and each book has three, chap three chapters, and each of those chapters is split up down into another three. So these beings, these supernatural beings, are very, very informed by the stars and aware of them, and thus a lot of the buildings and monuments they left behind have astronomical associations, such as the winter solstice and the summer solstice. You know, it's, it's funny you should mention uh, the angels and the stars because when I was a little kid, I remember my mom telling me on one summer night, she we were looking at the stars and she said, each and every star that you see is a window in heaven and behind each window is an angel. Well, that's interesting little insight. I'd never heard that from before, yeah. but she, she, she was, uh, I guess she there was a certain amount of truth in what she was talking about there. Yeah. Amazing. Even even, even uh, the Messiah, Jesus, is referred to as the bright and morning star mm -hmm. in the future, in Peter. And in the Old Testament, Lucifer, uh, uh, his name um, is Venus, and Venus is the bright and morning star. That's the last star that you see when all the other stars have, have, uh, have, have disappeared because of the, the light from the rising sun. Venus is the one left, and we're told that in the future, time to come, uh, the Messiah, Jesus, is the bright and morning star. Is there more than a coincidence, in your opinion, Pat, between, uh, you know, when Lucifer is called the morning star and Christ is called the morning star? Could this be a metaphor for the, uh, the binary existence that we have, being that for, you know, zero and one is binary code. So if you have zero, one binary, you have good, evil, up, down, in, out, Christ, Lucifer. Is there more than to this than meets the eye? Uh, yin and yang? Exactly. Uh, I'm sure there is, Rob, but uh, I don't know what it is. I, I think uh, in bygone times, mm -hmm. Lucifer, otherwise known as Satan, um, the prince of darkness, but before his fall, he was the bright and morning star, and he was the top angel in the whole echelon 
of, of angels created by God. They're, angels are created spirit beings, but they're also men. They're, everywhere they appear in scripture, they're, they're described as men. They look like men. Uh, they, they have been mistaken as men. They wear clothes. They eat. They drink. They get dirty feet because when the two angels come into Sodom, Lot washed their feet. They've yeah. got appetites. They eat a lot. Those same two guys ate two meals with a, a couple of chapters back there uh, in Genesis 18. Uh, but Lucifer was the top guy back then before his, his rebellion. He tried to usurp the throne of Yahweh. Uh, and he, I don't believe he got kicked out of heaven and was thrown down to earth. I believe he's still in this other parallel universe we call heaven. But they're spirit beings, but they look like us. Uh, so I'm sure there is some a, a lot in what you say, but I don't know about the binary aspects of it because um, math wasn't my strong subject in school, uh, I'm afraid. Uh, Rob, once they started with A squared plus B squared bracket equals uh, C minus, my head just went down on the desk. And, <laughs> then, and then it's, then it's time got, for a Guinness. I never figured that stuff out. Tell, tell me, uh, Patrick, what do the pyramids of Giza actually have to do with Bible prophecy? Well, there's a very enigmatic prof prophecy in Isaiah chapter 19, verses 19 and 20, which has been overlooked by more, most end-time scholars, students of eschatology, people who, who love uh, the prophecies. Mm -hmm. And in this Isaiah 19, 19, it says, In that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst or middle of the land of Egypt, and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. So when it speaks about in that day, that's referring to the day of wrath, the day of the Lord, mm -hmm. the day of tribulation, the day of his cruel anger, uh, the day of Christ. It's it's They're always referring to the, what we would call the apocalypse, the end days, the last bit of the chapter. Uh, referred to in the book of Revelation. So on that day, it says there's going to be an, both an altar and a pillar in the middle of the land of Egypt and a pillar at its border thereof to the Lord. Now, how can there be something in the middle of a country and at its border at the same time? To understand that, you've got to understand ancient history. And in ancient history, Egypt was divided into two. Yeah. There was Upper Egypt and there was Lower Egypt. And this was divided by a border that run from east to west and west to east west to east and it cut right through the Nile where the Nile breaks up into de uh, into the Nile Delta which goes into the Mediterranean Sea and right on that border right beside the Nile right on that spot is the Great Pyramid of Giza so the Great Pyramid of Giza is the altar and the pillar that this prophecy is referring to and it says in that day in the, the time of the apocalypse it should be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt so what is this Great Pyramid a sign of, and what is it a witness to? That's, again, what I answer in my book, The Nephilim and the Pyramid of the Apocalypse. Were the Nephilim also part of other philosophies around the world, Patrick? Absolutely. In just about every culture in the world, not just uh, in the, the Near East, mm -hmm. in the Mediterranean in ancient times, but if you go to Egypt, China, they have the same... Uh, culture, the same traditions are with her. For instance, the word avatar. We all saw the movie Avatar last week, yeah. or last year, rather, a fantastic movie. The, the word avatar comes from the Indian avatar titi, and avatar titi means the God who comes from heaven to and, and descends to earth and who mates with mortal women. That's exactly what it means. And in the, in the uh, epic of Gilgamesh, Many of the traditions all over the world, they have many, many similar stories about gods coming from heaven to earth, mating with mortal women and producing these demigods, which are part of their history. And that's where we, we get many of the statues and, and the iconic pictures that you'll see all over India, the Far East, China, Angkor Wat in Cambodia, which has Gerudo, who's half man, half beast. And you, tie, you can tie all these things together with, for instance, the gods of Egypt, like Horus, who was the, the body of a man and the head of a falcon, mm -hmm. or Tafu, the body of the man and the head of a nibus, uh, and Sobek, which had a, a crocodile head. All this stuff around the same area can be tied together. It fits like a hand on a glove, Rob. All right, Patrick, please stand by. You and I have to take our news break and uh, so listen to some words from our fine sponsors. We'll be back on the other side. Exo Nation, Dr. Patrick Heron is our special guest. What a guy. www. Neff 
www.nephph.ie. That's www.nephph.ie. And I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with Dr. Patrick Heron as we continue our discussion on the Nephilim, the Great Pyramids, and much more. We're going to be talking about the Antichrist. This coming up here in the X-Zone with yours truly, Rob McConnell. We'll be back on the other side of this commercial break. Whatever you do, don't go away. This is the X-Zone Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Ah, welcome back, everyone. There's nothing better than an Irish pub any night of the week. Right, Pat? Absolutely, yeah, with a few pints of the black stuff. <laughs> You've got that right, my friend. And a, and a little bit of Tullamore Jew whiskey mm. to chase it down, Rob. T- Tullamore Jew, it's as smooth as a baby's bum. And if you if you uh, put a small drop of water through a Tullamore Jew whiskey, it'll go down your throat like a torchlight procession and light up the toes in your boots, Bigara. Now, I'll tell you, if that doesn't make you want to go to your local Irish pub tonight, nothing will. In fact, I think I'm, I'm going to take Laura to the Whistling Walrus tonight for supper. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Patrick Heron is our special guest, a great guy. Uh, it's always enlightening to have Patrick with us here in the X Zone. His website is neph.ie, N E P H dot I E. And Patrick, before we went to the commercial break, uh, we were talking about the pyramids. And I was wondering if we, could, if we could finish that off because I really want to talk to you about the Antichrist. Okay, well, basically, very quickly, we just mentioned that the, the Pyramid of Giza is where it's going to be a sign of and a witness to something in the last days. Let me just give you a little uh, few of the mathematical properties associated sure. with the Great Pyramid of Giza. Now, originally, Rob, it was finished in a polished white limestone. Mm-hmm. The whole pyramid was polished white limestone. So it would have been white, smooth, iridescent, uh, impossible to climb or surmount. It was uh, visible from as far away as the curvature of the earth allowed in those days. It would, must have been an absolutely amazing sight, gleaming in the light of the sun and back the, in those days. Each side of the Great Pyramid is an equilateral triangle, which faces exactly to the true north, south, east. Each side of the base of the, Firigal, of the Great Pyramid, the length mm-hmm. is 365.2422 cubits in length. The angle of the slope of the pyramid rises at 10 to 9. That is, for every 10 feet you go up, you rise in altitude by 9 feet. And if you take the height of the Great Pyramid, multiply it by 10 to the power of 9, you get 91,840,000, which just happens to be the exact distance from the Earth to the Sun in miles. Uh, It's almost in the exact dead center of the world. Um, It intersects the 30th parallel, both longitude and latitude. There's, there's enough stone in it to build a six-foot wall from New York to Los Angeles. Wow. If it were a pyramid, it would be six, uh, or excuse me, if, if it were a, a skyscraper, it would be 42 stories high, which meant that it was the tallest building in the world for thousands and thousands of years. The solution to the mathematical problem of, of how to square the circle is incorporated in the geometry of the Great Pyramid. But what we've been asked 
to believe is, is that ancient Egyptians or primitive man, if you want, r running around the desert, dressed in animal skins, built this incredible monument, which we couldn't build today, by the way, with all the money and machinery we have. We couldn't do it. Yet we're asked to believe that these guys built it, this, yet somehow they hadn't figured out how to invent the wheel. So, you know, now that's that's a, that's a bit like saying if you give a screwdriver to a chimpanzee, he's going to make a television set for you. So, so something. Go Sorry, ahead. Go ahead. I, I was just going to ask you. So, who do you think built the pyramids? Well, I've no doubt that it was built by these guys called the Nephilim, which are who are mentioned in Genesis chapter six, verse four mm -hmm. in the Bible. It says there were Nephilim in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. These Nephilim, as I say, are what you and I would call fallen angels, but they're spirit men. They're, they're men, but of a spirit nature. We do not know what spirit is, but we look like them. They look like us. That's why it says several times in Genesis, let us make man in our image. And these spirit men fell. Nephilim means the fallen ones, hence fallen angels. They fell from heaven, mm -hmm. fell to earth, and fell from grace. They had sex with ordinary human mortal women, and produced offspring, which were the giants of the Old Testament and of many of the traditions from all around the world. The giants that we get in all these historical uh, um, writings that are left before. So, behind. so is, is is it possible that the Bible was not actually written by God, but was by, written by the Nephilim? No, no, no. The Bible was absolutely written by forty different writers but it has one author the author is god but mm -hmm. it talks about these nephilim in many places in the old testament and it ta also talks about them in the book of revelation right and it, the, the, it refers to them in a few places in the gospels it's just that never ne nobody has ever put it together fit all the jigsaw pieces together like for instance rob when it talks about the uh, the, the the greek gods coming down from heaven they lived in mount olympus and delphi zeus came down he took alchemy into wife a mortal woman, she also almost died giving birth to Hercules. That's where all this stuff comes from. You put that together with the scriptural stuff and then tie in the Book of Enoch, which I have done in my, my last two books. And the Book of Enoch is incredible because it gives huge chunks uh, that are missing from the Old Testament mm -hmm. are in the Book of Enoch where it talks about these watchers or fallen angels coming down from heaven and it describes them. It even says that they had privy members like horses. That is, they were hung like horses. They got penises like horses. And I even have pictures of so, a couple of these guys from ancient Egypt in uh, my book, The Nephilim and the Pyramid of the Apocalypse. I've, I've got a picture of a guy there who was the god Min. And he, you know, this is an incredible graving, engraving from a temple in Greece. Looks like a photograph of a guy. It's done so well. So I, uh, uh, so I guess this is where the expression hung like a horse comes from. Yeah, I, well, it is, except yeah. these guys are hung like horses. And it actually mentions in one of the Old Testaments when it's talking about the princes of Egypt, it says that they, they it refers to them being hung like horses, literally. And th this guy is the god Min, M-I-N. And when, when I put his, his photograph in my book, uh, I was tempted to, to say, this is the god Min mm -hmm. in Egypt. And I was tempted to put in, in brackets, if this is Min, I wouldn't like to meet his brother, Max. <laughs> But these are the guys who built the thing. And the Great Pyramid of Giza, you see, what is it a mm -hmm. sign of and what is it a witness to, just to finish off on that, Rob? If you jump into the Gospel of John, uh, the Messiah said a very, very uh, well-known uh, um, verse of Scripture. You'll hear that at funerals all the, all the time. He said, in my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. So he talked about this place he was going to prepare a place in the house of many mansions. Again, Paul refers to what he talks about. We have an eternal house in heaven whose builder mm -hmm. and architect was God. Then in the book of Hebrews, it talks about Abraham who looked for a city in heaven whose builder and maker is God. Again, in Hebrews later on, it talks about you've come unto Mount Zion, the city of God, the new Jerusalem. You get into the book of Revelation. Again, it talks a few times about the new Jerusalem. And then at the end of the book of Revelation, in chapter 20 it talks about a new heaven and a new earth and it describes this city the new jerusalem it tells us all the different stones it's made out of it gives it tells us that the river of life flows out from the middle of it it says it's got 12 gates made out of a single pearl each it says the water of life is there for for the healing of the nations and 
after this lengthy description, it gives the dimension, gives us the, the dimensions of this future city. And it says its length and its breadth and its height are the same. I believe that is a pyramid in shape. So when the uh, prophecy in Isaiah says that the, the altar and pillar, pillar mm -hmm. or the great pyramid in Giza is going to be sign and a witness to something in the last days, what I am saying is, is that the great pyramid of Giza, originally finished in a polished white lime, limestone, is a, a, a replica of the celestial city, the New Jerusalem, Mount Zion, the city of God, the place where the Messiah went to, where he is now going to prepare a place for us, and that this is a pyramid in shape. So we have the great pyramid of Giza pointing into the future at this future pyramid city, the New Jerusalem, and we've got the New Jerusalem, the city of God, pointing back at the great pyramid of Giza. There is a connection between the two, and that is what that enigmatic prophecy in Isaiah 19, verses 19 and 20 is about. The only thing I believe, Rob, is, is that the fallen angels, uh, the devil, Lucifer and his princes, when they fell to earth, you know, somebody said that the devil, the devil never had an original idea. He always copies or imitates or apes what the true God did, does. So when these guys fell to earth, they built this incredible pyramid right in the middle of the world, white shining limestone with all its astronomical and mathematical associations. But they built this as an earthly representation of the celestial city that they had come from. It's a, it's a an earthly representation of the New Jerusalem, which is in this parallel universe, where in there these other gods live, the Messiah mm -hmm. sitting on the right hand of his father, who we call the 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 Most High God, surrounded by a whole bunch of these other spirit men we call them angels, like Gabriel and Michael, and twenty four uh, um, elders mm -hmm. sitting on twenty four thrones. We don't know who they are, but that is what the Great Pyramid represents. But I believe it was built by the fallen angels, the Nephilim, as a monument to their own pride, their own ego. Why do you think the pyramid was built in in Egypt and not somewhere else in the world? Well, I mean, there's lots and lots of pyramids uh, in the world besides Egypt. I don't know, you were in Mexico, if you yeah. saw the Pyramid of the Sun and those other incredible well, course, pyramids sure. down there, which yeah. are just amazing. Yeah. But I don't know why exactly Egypt, but I do know that it's almost a dead center of the world. It's only about 20 miles off the actual dead center of the whole world. Maybe that has something to do with it. I know that the four star shafts, the four star, star shafts align with four stars. Maybe that has something got to do with it. Perhaps the Nile uh, is a representation of the Milky Way, because we're told that where the pyramids are situated, those three pyramids uh, are supposed to be a reflection of Orion's belt. So. There, those are just questions I don't have the answers to, but we do know that these guys are uh, very well uh, associated with the stars and the procession of the equinoxes and the prophecies in the stars. Mm -hmm. Because it says in Genesis that the stars were given for signs and for seasons. And the whole of, of this history of man from Genesis to Revelation are written in the stars. We have lost all that knowledge now, Rob. I'm sure if we had the knowledge that, for instance, that the Magi, the Zoroastrian monks from Persia, who were able to study the stars, I knew by the conjunctions and the line, alignments that were happening there between Vir Virgo, the Virgin, Leo, the King, who was the Messiah, Jesus, uh, Serpents, the Serpent, Draco, the Dragon, and all the other things, they knew that the Messiah was going to be born, and it led them to Bethlehem. In the same way, I'm sure they will pretend things that are going to happen in our very near future. But because we've lost all that knowledge, we're probably going to miss the boat on that. But these guys know about it. So, so tell me, what's the story uh, on the on the Antichrist? Um, you know, are we in the end times? How do we know if and when the Antichrist is coming? And how do we know that this this is really true? Well, I'll tell you how we know it's true. It's because about 30% of the Bible is prophetic, maybe mm -hmm. more, maybe up to 40% of the Bible is prophetic. It's the only book in the world that is actually prophetic. It tells you things that are going to happen before they do. Like So then the veracity and truthfulness is borne out by the fulfillment, or if it's not fulfilled, then you can throw it away and read, you know, War and Peace or Ulysses or something. Mm -hmm. But the point is, is that and, and many of your listeners will have seen that movie, The Passion of the Christ. Sure. In the last 24 hours of the of the of the life of the Messiah, 25 specific prophecies came to pass that were all written 
hundreds and hundreds of years BC. For instance, I'll give you a few. It said he was going to be betrayed by his friend, mm -hmm. that he would be betrayed for 30 pieces of silver, that his friend would use the money to, to buy the potter's field, uh, that his friend would commit suicide, that he'd be crucified with thieves and robbers, that they would stick a spear in his side and blood and water would come out, that they would gamble over a seamless robe, etc., uh, etc. Et 25 specific prophecies in one 24-hour period. In fact, the Messiah fulfilled 106 specific prophecies in his life. All the other prophecies that were given in prior to the Messiah coming in, throughout the Old Testament, all have come to pass with 100% um, accuracy to date. Not one of them has, has, has missed out. And the one, of course, with regard to the end times, Rob, is regard to the Jews. Many, many prophecies said the Jews would be kicked out of Palestine, scattered all over the face of the world, and everywhere the Jews would go, they would be persecuted and despised and hated. And mm -hmm. that happened in 70 AD when Titus, a Roman general, sacked Jerusalem, slaughtered about a million Jews. The rest of them were scattered over the four corners of the world, hence the wandering Jew. They were hated and persecuted everywhere they went, which culminated the Holocaust in Germany in the Second World War. But many, many other prophecies have said in the last days, God would regather his chosen people and establish them back in Palestine for the last time, for the second, in fact, the third and last time, and that he would do this as a sign to the rest of the world that we were in the last generation. In fact, one prophecy said that that would happen in one day. And on one day back in May 1948, the, the, the Brits went into the UN with a mandate or a proposal that Israel be made a nation state again. It was backed up by the Yanks. So literally in one day, Israel became a nation state again. All right, now stand by, six. Patrick. We've got to take our final break here. Patrick Heron is our special guest. Dr. Patrick Heron, that is. www.nef. Dot IE. That's www.neph.ie. We'll be back on either side of this break. Don't go away. Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation, whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials. How we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Welcome back, everyone. Dr. Patrick Heron is our special guest. His website is www.nef.net. Dot I -E, that's N-E-P-H dot I-E. You know, Pat, time goes by so fast whenever you're with us. We're have, going to have to have you back on to continue our conversation about the Antichrist, the end times. And I, my, my final question for you, Pat, is that throughout the ages, throughout the years, the Bible has been edited, re-edited, re-edited, re-edited. Is it possible that the true meaning of the apocalypse, the book of Revelations, was edited out and that what we read today is not what was written so many years ago? 
No, I wouldn't concur with that at all, Rob. Uh, on the contrary, the Old Testament was protected in such an incredible detail by the Jews right up to the time of the Messiah mm -hmm. that only photocopying would be more accurate. You know, when they were copying out the Old Testament, um, when they got to a place where uh, it mentioned God, Jehovah, Yahweh, they used to go and change their clothes. If they got to the end of a page, they used to uh, um, burn their pen and get a new pen. They, they, they went to extraordinary lengths. And, and the Old Testament was written in Hebrew, mm -hmm. and the New Testament is written in Greek. And both of those languages are mathematical as well as literal. That is, they all have letters associating with them. You know, alpha, beta, uh, delta, omega, etc. Mm -hmm. all have numerical values. So you can't screw around with words and distort them or edit them. So, no, it hasn't been edited out. You, you can take uh, different versions and they might put in some... Um, words which mm -hmm. are a little different right. than maybe the word in the King James Version. By by and large, you're going to get exactly what the Messiah went. And, you know, 96, 97% of it is plain, simple stuff. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you unto me, that where I am, there may, you may be also. Most of it's just plain English. Right. Uh, Pat, we've got about uh, 40 seconds left. What would you like to leave the Exxon with tonight? Well, uh, my Exxon, if you want links to my book, you can get my uh, The Nephilim and the Pyramid of the Apocalypse and Return of the Antichrist in the New World Order. Mm -hmm. They are e-books. They're audio books. They're only about $10 on Amazon or in your bookshop or Barnes & Noble. I also have a YouTube channel. Uh, so it... I've got, you know, 14 YouTubes up there on a lot of this stuff on the, the Nephilim, the Fallen Angels, and the various chapters from my book. So people are welcome to go and watch YouTubes if they don't like reading. Patrick, take care of yourself, my good friend. And uh, quickly, give our listeners your website one more time. One more time. It's www.nephph.ie. That's N E P H. .ie. And thanks a million, Rob. Great to talk to you again. God bless you. And Take, God bless all your grandchildren. Thank you very much, my friend. Now, go grab the Guinness before it's too late. I shall. <laughs> Exonation. Nation, Dr. Patrick Heron has been my guest. Once again, his website is www.neph.ie, and the good doctor will be with us in the next couple of weeks because we want to continue our conversation on the Antichrist. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news as we continue from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't forget you can listen to the Exxon 724-365 at xzbn.net forward slash live dot htm. <laughs>